Hi, Chris Barker here with your hot take for this week. So this week we're gonna talk about why the Fed can't get inflation under control. Uh, so just a little bit of backstory. The primary reason uh, inflation occurs is too much money chasing after too few goods. And if you listened to my podcast last week, uh, or if you haven't listened to my podcast last week, it's a pretty good primer there on uh, what, what this means and, and how that works. But uh, there's competition for everything from a gallon of milk to a new home. Uh, so maybe more visceral when trying to buy a new home in a competitive market or buy a home, not new necessarily, uh, in a competitive market where uh, home prices can uh, drive up you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, just based on lack or scarce uh, uh, a supply of homes. But this also occurs in things as commonplace as grocery staples. So uh, bought, I buy uh, supplies here for the office and uh, in a month, a price for a 38 uh, Diet Cokes has gone up uh, $2.15. So uh, we're seeing it in things, even uh, Diet Coke. So uh, the Fed is under the idiotic belief that raising the rate it pays banks on excess reserves called uh, interest on excess reserves or IOER is going to pull money out of people's hands and thus stabilize inflation through the supply of money. Taking it one step further, higher debt costs for a family is what the Fed believes is going to get inflation under control, which to me is bananas. So uh, here's how it works. The Fed, uh, by increasing rates uh, that it pays on excess reserves, uh, ends up affecting consumers who want to borrow money. So if, if the Fed is going to pay a bank 5% on, on money that it's not using currently or lending out, the bank has no incentive to lend that money out to an individual investor or individual consumer for anything less than what the Fed's going to pay. And in a lot of ways, it's uh, considerably higher than what the Fed's going to pay because there's a lot more risk investing in or uh, giving money to an individual rather than giving it to the federal government and, and the full faith and credit backed by that. So we've never had a super high inflation environment like this under the abundant reserve model, which was a result of the 2007-2008 decline. And so right now, it's sort of a, 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 an experiment the Fed is running to see if uh, raising rates in an abundant reserve model actually works. Uh, and we've seen thus far that it has not, with inflation almost flat since the beginning of rate hikes back in March, which has got investors scared and why the market after the last rate hike has taken a, a pretty substantial decline. Uh, investors really didn't know what to expect either uh, and just hoped that the, the increase in rates would bring inflation to heel as it has done in the past under a scarce reserve model. So the market tumbled, uh, like I said, in September because investors are really getting wise to the lack of movement uh, with inflation coupled with Jerome Powell's power trip stating that he's going to continue raising rates and emphatically stating that he's not going to go back to the system that worked in the past, the scarce reserve model. Uh, it's just well, you know, all this kind of freaked investors out. We saw kind of a, a pretty substantial drop, but uh, Jerome Powell uh, inherited this abundant reserve model uh, since being the reserve chair since only 2018. Uh, and so a lot of people say, oh, poor, poor Jay Powell, he shouldn't be to blame, but that's ridiculous. So if you buy a used car, knowing that the suspension is damaged and you refuse to fix it, you are the one to blame if the wheels fall off. And I'm gonna say it, the Federal Reserve is on a power trip sticking to their guns that have been misfiring all year long. Uh, so that's it for this week. If you wanna hear more compelling content, please subscribe, uh, comment below, we'd love to hear from you. Support us with our merch and sponsor links below. Uh, click the bell, be the first to know. Uh, and as always, this does not constitute financial advice. Please talk to a financial professional before making any financial decisions. All right, that's it. Take care, have a great week. Bye-bye.